So today I'm over here visiting one of my friends and I'm gonna look at helping him set up his studio from a lighting perspective. So I've got a bunch of my different lights that we're gonna try out. We're gonna do a couple different setups so we can look and see what works best for setting up his studio from a lighting perspective. So this is Joe. Joe, um, sorry for the audio, you know, it's it's a warehouse where we're gonna do another video later on audio for your um, videos, but today we're in here talking about lighting and lighting for a space. So Joe is gonna turn this space here into more of his studio. Um, so kind of tell everybody what you're doing and kind of what I'm over here helping you with. Sure, so the overall concept of the space is to be able to kind of do it all in one spot. Um, and that's everything from the inception of the ideas for video or um, images and website creation, digital content, whatever it takes. And then what we do is we conceptualize it up front and then we are able to come back in the back and shoot it. So the two main focuses of this specific space is going to be filming online classes for fitness. Um, and two is creating the assets that go around it for marketing, the website, digital advertising, anything like that. So with gym owners, you've already had a lot of gym owners specifically creating content for their business. What are they struggling with the most when that's getting created? Well, so I think, well, so I think the biggest one is always going to be creativity. So put that one aside because that's something that, you know, is harder to work on. But the more tangible things are a lot of people's first time using something other than their phone to film something, right? So, and their phone's cameras do a lot more than they realize. So I think that when people say, oh, I have a phone, they look at it as a cheap camera, when really it's a very expensive camera that has a lot of pre-processing in it. And now they're going to a DSLR, they're going to the first mirrorless camera, and they feel like they should be getting better quality. And the truth is the data that they're capturing is better, but what it looks like isn't the same because it's not doing pre-processing within the unit itself. So I think that that's a huge hurdle for them to understand, A, how to take care of that data, but number two is what actually are the good components of great video, which as we know from doing it so much, number one is lighting and number two is audio which seemingly are not the most important when it comes to video. Yeah, so you know, one of our big focuses today is we're gonna set up lighting. We're gonna make sure that people understand how to make their stuff look better. Most gyms are in a warehouse like this. They have the overhead fluorescent lightings. It's probably flickering in the, in the camera. I'm yeah, trying to see it. I think it's right? flickering a little bit. <laughs> so, you know, this is where most of you would start with. So if you're in here trying to do your workout videos, this is what it looks like. It, you can get by but it probably looks bad. We're gonna try and make this thing look better and cinematic, something that you're proud of to be able to put out and really eventually sell for your members. So I brought over some of my lighting for Joe to try. He's gonna buy some of this stuff and there's a lot of like the knockoff brands other than the main brands that he's gonna test out. So I brought over an Aperture 120D with a softbox here. I have a Westcott LED panel right here. And then I have the Nanlite Pavo tubes. And then I also have the Aperture uh, MC, whatever it is, little itty bitty light here. So we're gonna kind of use this stuff to, to use and show and see if we can make this thing look really, really nice with honestly not doing anything other than changing the lights. This is how they're gonna start, right? Like this is how a normal person just getting into it, they're gonna be right next to the wall. They're gonna be talking without any kind of extra microphones, no lapel mic, nothing on the camera, just the audio coming right from the camera, the lighting that's already existing in the space, about this distance, and they just kind of start from here. Yeah, so first thing that I have the person do whenever we come into a space is we move them away from the wall. So we're shooting into the corner because we want the most depth. We wanna get off of the wall. Just by moving off of the wall, it's gonna look way more cinematic. Yeah, so, this is how you get that blurry background effect. Everyone mm -hmm. talks about depth of field. It's literally just adding some extra space behind you. And then step two to this, every single gym, you're gonna think of crazy, but we're actually gonna turn off these lights. Yep, makes perfect sense. All right, so immediately by shutting the lights off, and just having an external light that we can control, we can see that Joe looks a significant amount better. You mean I don't get to do that? 
and then everything changes. You, if you want, you can do it again. We'll, we'll go back and forth. I can adjust how bright it is. So like right here, we're looking like Joe is, you know, he's obviously, the lights are turned off, but he looks like the subject. So like when you look at him, there he is, there he is. So like he's definitely standing out on this image. We could even have him take another step forward. And now it kind of eliminated some of these shadows that were back here. So that made him a little too bright because he's close to the light. So what we can do is back this light up. It gives us a little more light into the entire image. Obviously, we've got a really wide lens on here. So we would kind of be in that area. And Joe looks good. Joe looks like he's going to be a fitness model on Instagram. We actually have this light at a 45 degree angle and above. And the reason we have this because it looks like the sun. So it kind of gives him some shadows on this side of his face. It makes it look cinematic. So with one light, this is, I, this is the look I go for pretty much every time if I only have one light. I do this and you're in pretty dang good shape. So we're gonna add a couple more lights to try and make it a little brighter back here, make it less cinematic and more for like a, any gym that wants to use it. All right, so the next light we're adding is the Westcott. So a lot of you guys have seen these LED panels um, they're really cheap. I think you've got one. You've got a nice one though. Yeah. Um, but I started out with just an LED panel. And so um, this is a really expensive one, but you know, it's just kind of simulating what these LED panels could do. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go opposite. So if we've got 45 here, we're going to go 45 over here just so we get brightness on both sides. It's actually going to light up the background a little bit as well. So it just gives you more of a, a bright feel. You know, this is more preferred for women. Yep, fills in more of the shadows, gives you a little less contour, but it definitely brightens up the entire look. Right. Take this in a little bit. That's kind of what Joe looks. You know, if you're looking at that right there, most of you guys would absolutely love that. You would kill for that. You know, you're eliminating the flicker. You have two same color lights, um, everything set up right, and that looks like something you would want to see on, I don't know, I'm studio. studio. There we go. That's a good brain out right there. Perfect. All right, so last thing we're going to do is we're going to try and get rid of some of the shadows back here. So we're going to do some backlighting. So we're going to do two different ways. I've got the Pavo tubes. We'll widen this out so you can see. Boop. So I've got the Pavo tubes over here. Um, and what we're going to do is first we're going to show it with lighting the background up, and then we're going to light Joe from the back. So it's going to make him separate himself even more from the background. So we'll show you both ways. Good job. You can actually see the glow too. Oh, that's so cool. So even when you're describing the shadows, you can literally see my hand that's just outside of that. So how it shows the shadow. And then as soon as I come inside here, it goes away. Yeah, so like that right there is a so just studio. Push it on me a little bit. Yeah. You can see just the outer, but now all my shadows are gone. Yeah. Four lights. We've got two lights on Joe, filling in the shadows on both sides of his face. We've got two back lights lighting up the background. That way he is able to be bright and look pleasing for the audience. The other thing we're going to do now, we're going to take those lights and we're going to flip them around and face his back. So it's going to be dark behind him back here, but he's going to kind of have this glow right around him where it makes him really stand out and separate from the background. So you can see he kind of separates a little bit more. I also like these because you can keep those in the image. If we were a little darker, so let's say we went here to make it a little more moody. So this is more of a dramatic look that helps kind of separate him this with a- great for photography too. Yeah, this is beautiful for, for photography. Um, another nice thing about these, we'll do it. We can change the color to any color on these. So we're going to change the color to um, Joe's colors. That way it can just give it a different look, you know, based on if he's wearing a, a certain color or wants to promote his brand a little bit. So we can immediately see like completely different look. I would turn one of these lights up a little brighter on one side. And that right there is like a very uh, moody type vibe. Um, really setting your brand apart. You know, the other thing we can do is move these lights in and out of the frame. So you don't have to have them in the frame. We can move them all over the place, but just for today's purposes, we're going to keep them in there. So what, what do you have focus peaking on? Like what, yeah, what is, so, what's, is that the histogram? No, so this is a, it's called zebras. So it right. tells me when things are uh, blown out. 
Got it. So I can right. see like what's really bright and what's not. The great thing about what we just showed you is that's very expensive. It's a beautiful setup. That's about $5,000 worth of lighting. So let's say we have a minimal budget and really what we can find on the cheap. So we're gonna use the Westcott panel, which is an expensive panel, but it's just an LED panel like you could buy for really cheap. And so we're gonna show you if you were able to get just one light, what should you do to make your studio look good? So typically when you get one of these lights, you get it like this. There's nothing over the top. What you wanna use is a panel like this. It comes with a panel that, it's called a diffusion panel. And what that does, it makes the light softer. So if you look at me here, it looks very harsh, it's very bright, it doesn't look very appealing on someone's face. As soon as you add this diffusion, it makes what's called a soft light. So it's significantly softer. It makes things just look more appealing to the, the human eye. And really, like you wanna diffuse the light as much as possible. So you want the light as close as possible and as turned down as possible. You don't wanna crank it up. You wanna turn it down as much as possible because it looks the nicest. So have as much diffusion as you can, which is a soft colored panel, and then you wanna turn down and as close to the person as you possibly can. So I would actually have this thing directly in front of you, almost like a ring light. A lot of people know what the ring lights are. But I would actually put it directly in front of you and up. So when we have it directly in front of you, it's gonna give you obviously the most amount of light. And most people are gonna be able to turn it up like this. And then we'll brighten the camera up a little bit. So most people, if you have one light and that's all you can do, this is what you can have it look like. It's not great, but it's still better than your overhead it's, light. Yeah, light. it's removing the overhead light. That's really kind of the core takeaway for me. In a perfect world, you're buying two lights and you're gonna have them here and here. And you can get that for, I wanna say I got my first set for like a hundred bucks. Yeah, Maybe. I mean, you can get- With the stands, with the lights. You can get like the lighting kits nowadays for like 180 bucks on mm -hmm. Amazon. They come with three lights. They'll all be underpowered. They'll all be a little, but it's like, but what you can accomplish with them is so much more than trying to justify the overhead lights. Yeah. This is what it does when you, when you make the light less bright. A lot of people just want to crank it up as much as possible. So a lot of people will just come in and be like, yeah, yeah, give me all the power. And it just doesn't look as pleasing as if we can turn this thing down, you know, to a, a better looking, just light that's soft. All right, so another thing you can do if you only have one light, you're gonna be able to use what's called a bounce. And so you can find, this is called a five-in-one five in one reflector. You got on Amazon for what, 40 bucks? Yeah. So what this does is basically it fills in the opposite side of the face. So we've got it really bright over there. We're coming actually in front of him. And I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna bounce the light off of it onto him. So we can see how dark this side of the face is. Immediately if we bring this up, we can see how much it's filled in now. That way, if we only have one light as an option, we can now take this and give him some fill on the opposite side of his face. So there's other colors you can do, like this gold is obviously gonna be much more reflective. And it's gonna make it a little different color. So he gets a little more uh, sun tanning on this one. So <laughs> it bounces a whole lot better. There's a silver one as well. So basically you can use these to, to help you with your light so you don't have to buy as much expensive light. I mean, you can even see it on the background back there yeah. of how much this thing is bouncing. I'll sit in my director's chair. Sure. Give you a tan while we're here. <laughs> you know, really what this boils down to is how much money do you want to spend? Why do you spend the money on the certain stuff? So this lighting setup, like we said, I said earlier, it's about $5,000. Why? Well, it's all wireless. So I have V-mount batteries. What are those? I don't even know what, how much those cost now. Uh, Two, so those are range, Yeah, those range from like 120 for one that lasts for an hour to like three, 400 bucks. Each of these have V-mount batteries. I can have these lights run by themselves, no cords or anything for like four hours. Um, that's, that's a lot, that's significant. Uh, the, this light over here is, a, it has a light dome on it, so you can kind of see it down here in the corner. This light dome is just a diffusion. It's this on top of that. So basically I can have a softer light source. Um, it just makes everything look much more pleasing. This is really expensive, the, the LED panel, because it has bicolor, so I can change the color and the intensity. So I can make this white, I can make it more yellow, I can make it, you know, really just match whatever my surroundings are. And then these, I mean, they can pretty much do whatever you want. And you know, a, a thing that you're looking at when you're 
looking at your lighting setup is a thing called CRI. And basically what this CRI, well, you're looking at CRI and you're looking at lumens. So how bright can the light get? And then how accurate is the light that it's putting out? So me, when I'm doing video all the time, I want a very accurate light. So if I say this is 5,600 Kelvin, which is the color of the sun, I want it to be 5,600 Kelvin. So I think overall, if you're just starting out and you're just looking to get over the hump of um, what you're currently using, which is no real camera equipment and just your phone and the overhead lights that are already in your space, I would say the first move you wanna do is get probably a cheaper LED panel that comes with some sort of diffusion, so this way you're not just getting raw LEDs on you, and then picking up a reflector to then have that extra fill light. So this way you're getting rid of the overhead lights, and a lot of it is then just positioning the subject. Get them off the walls, try to remove as many shadows as you want, and understand that what's lit in the background is not nearly as important as making sure the subject is constantly in focus and well lit. If you are gonna spend a little bit of extra money, I would say that you could probably look to things that have a little amenities, like rather than getting a more accurate light color, I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna get my lights on wheels. Because I think lights on wheels changes the game for you. Um, it seems like a silly thing to have to spend an extra 80, 90 bucks on, but I'm telling you right now, it's more future-proof than almost anything else that I bought. Mm -hmm. um, and I think from there, as you start to get into the price range of, let's say, when you're getting to 500 to 1,000 dollars, you can start messing with multiple lights. So look for a light that can work really well, like this Aperture 120D. That's probably closer to 1,000 dollars, but there's Godox 150, Godox 60W. All of these kind of lights will still provide a single light source that is able to diffuse. And then you can use your secondary, your LED panel from your starter kit to do the background fill. Absolutely. We appreciate you guys watching. You know, Joe and I have a lot more videos like audio on this is terrible. So next video is gonna be how we can improve audio in a warehouse so you guys can make videos better when you're trying to show off your workouts for your members and all that kind of stuff. So if you guys have questions, let us know down in the comments, but we appreciate you guys watching. See ya.